Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's GFW Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. I'd like to welcome everybody, and uh, we can get started with um, a few business matters offhand. Uh, I do not have any further update, as, as discussed last week, the situation with Jeff Jarrett, and I ask as a respect for Jeff and the, the personal matter that there are no questions on today's call regarding Jeff Jarrett. That said, I'd like to welcome today's three special guests for truly an, an unprecedented teleconference as we welcome the creative team for GFW. Let's first welcome, uh, let's see where we got him here on the, my list here. Uh, of, uh, I, got, I can find the phone numbers here, so give me a second here. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Coach Scott Demore, who truly brings the global flavor to GFW. Scott, welcome. Hey, thanks, Ross. Glad to be here. Next, we've got a guy with uh, 15 years in-ring experience and now truly showing his, uh, his wrestling knowledge behind the scenes, Sanjay Dutt. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. And finally, we've got a guy with a, a ton of experience. Big John, welcome. Hello, everyone. All righty. Well, we're going to open it up for some questions. We have a, a lot of people waiting to, to talk to you three guys. So, again, media, as I asked in the past, if you'd please identify yourself and your media outlet one question at a time, and please do not get back in the queue until we uh, give you a heads up that it's uh, it's good to go for a second question. And please, on, on your questions, specify who you'd like to answer the questions or if they're just general for uh, for the three of them. And we will uh, open up for some questions now. It is star six to uh, to get in the queue for questions. Q and A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hey. Are you there? Yeah, hello. This is Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. Uh, I kind of had a general question for, for everyone. Um, I wanted to see just kind of what your reaction was when you heard all the, the rumors floating around last week about uh, Anthem wanting to sell GFW and, and, and the, any talks or um, uh, other reactions you guys had backstage. Uh, well, this is... Uh, Scott Demore, and uh, there hasn't really been a lot of backstage uh, reaction in the sense because we haven't we haven't had any events. But I think that Ed Norholm addressed those uh, those issues quite uh, quite eloquently and pretty succinctly last week. So I think that kind of stands and tells you where Anthem is and that they're investing in key areas and we're moving forward. Yeah, I'll just add. I think that the this is John, by the way. The demise of this promotion has been prophesized by a lot of people for many, many years. And, um, you know, I get it. We're, we're all in this business. And, uh, you know, having those stories out there generate page views and generate uh, drama and controversy and all that stuff. But, you know, as Scott said, I think Ed addressed that. We, uh, we have a, a solid plan to move forward, and we're excited about our future. Um, hi there, it's Gil Samuel from Real Sports. Um, one of the people who had been brought in recently uh, was Dutch Mantel. What was what will his role be going forward in the creative side of uh, GFW? Dutch Mantel will continue in his capacity. He's a he's a great wealth of knowledge. He's been a member of this creative team since I rejoined earlier this year. He was a member of this creative team when I joined in 2003. And uh, he will be part of the creative team in the meetings, contributing and doing what Dutch does best, which is use his decades of knowledge to uh, help us steer this this company in a forward direction and be forward thinking while still being mindful of what's worked and not worked in the past. Hello, it's Steve Herman from the Buzzards Wrestling Podcast. Um, got a question for all you guys. 
twofold. Um, I noticed today that it's 12 years today since the X Division triple threat between Samoa Joe and the star Christopher Daniels. For me, still probably the best ever match in Impact Wrestling history. Wonder if you agreed. If you don't, what do you think is? Um, and also, are you confident that not just the X Division, which has been a staple for Impact and, and for Global Force Wrestling now, are you confident that you can get back to those levels going forward? Hey, this is Sanjay. Uh, I, I tend to agree with um, the general consensus that that's you know been one of the greatest matches of, of the history of this company. Uh, it showcased a different style of wrestling, and, and like you said, 12 years ago, uh, they were they and everybody else in the exhibition was, was were doing that type of wrestling that now is, um, you know, it, it's caught fire on the independent scene and, and beyond. And I think that, uh, you know, now we have a great chance to kind of capitalize on, on the popularity of that style of wrestling nowadays. Yeah, and this is this is Scott. Uh, I, I mean, if you look at it, there's three members of this current creative staff that were part of the, the creative team in 2005 when that match and so many other great matches like that happened. So obviously we think fondly of that time. We think fondly of those guys, and we think that we've put a team together combining people from different, different backgrounds and different mindsets, and we are going to put out a great product moving forward, much like uh, there's been throughout the years. Hi, this is Brayden Harrington. Right now, here in Toronto, the question for Coach DeMore. I myself, and I'm sure a lot of people are, a huge fans of when you were the manager of Team Canada. I'd just like to hear some thoughts on that and maybe some thoughts on your former Team Canada members, Bobby Root and Eric Young, and their uh, success in uh, the WWE. Well, I've always, thank you, number one. I've always uh, appreciated the time that we had as Team Canada, it was very personal to me because I handpicked those guys that I knew from uh, from the Ontario Independence, Border City Wrestling, and other places, and brought them here. I thought we had a a, a good run. I thought it was a great platform to get uh, young guys a chance to get on a national, international platform and showcase themselves and develop. Um, you know, it was one of the favorite times of my career. We all still remain friends to these days. I was just chatting with uh, both Bobby. And uh, EY the other day because they were in Ontario doing, uh, doing. If you'd like to ask a question, please press one to add your your request has been received. All the success that they they've had that they continue to get, and I wish them all the best in the future because as great a talents as they are, they're even better human beings. And as much as I've enjoyed working with them, I uh, I value their friendship even so much more because anyone who's ever interacted with them, and really all the members of Team Canada. Um, you know, it was just a good group of good people. So I think Bobby Roode, God bless him, go there, take over the world, and EY is going to be right behind him. Coach and Sanjay, you want to uh, address uh, one of the former Team Canada members coming back, P.D. Williams. Yeah, hey, Sanjay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the return of P.D. Williams, at Destination X was, uh, you know, it, it was a highlight for me, especially being in the in the match. And uh, PD's been such a pivotal uh, person, a player in the X Division for so many years. And, and I think it was around eight or nine years since we'd seen him on Impact last. And I don't think he's missed a beat. Uh, and, and there's going to be definitely more to see of PD Williams coming in the future. Hi there, uh, Joseph Ranske here from Across the Pond Wrestling. Um, we've seen this year especially a lot of integration of and work with other companies like you work with NOAA and AAA and talents coming over like um, Ishimori and Ehihud uh, Fantasma. Are there any other countries or particular promotions you'd like to work with? And within that, um, as you may have guessed from this being an English branch, are there any particular English talent who you'd love to uh, bring into the fold at DFW? Uh, this is Scott, and I mean, we value our partnerships, uh, the ones that you mentioned and others that we have, and we, we want to continue to have somewhat of an open-door policy where we want to bring in and showcase different talents from around the world and work with different promotions because in this industry, in this day and age, 
there's certainly a, a mutually beneficial arrangement for there to be multiple groups working together. There's no reason to be out there and feuding with each, with each other. Let's all, let's all work together in whatever ways possible to move forward and keep, uh, keep a strong uh, and, uh, and uh, viable wrestling uh, industry out there. There's a tremendous UK scene, as you well know. There's, there's amazing talent out there. There's lots of companies, and we are, we are wide open to, to looking at working with anybody. As you know, this company's had great success in the UK in the past. We are very excited to uh, be back in partnership with Spike UK and airing over there, and uh, we can't wait to, at some point in the future, getting back, whether it's with local UK promotions or, or back how we used to on our own, but getting out there in front of the UK fans. You may now ask your question. Hi, guys. Uh, Ryan Bowman from the TheGorillaPosition.com. Uh, this question is for all three of you guys. Uh, you do a lot of work with other companies like AAA and NOAA. How hard is it to work with other organizations on a show without compromising your own characters and storylines? Hey, it's Scott again. Um, I think if everybody's open-minded and is working in a direction of what's best for the product, uh, we stop being protectionist and we start looking at how we can advance wrestling in general then uh, you know uh, we're all we're all going to we're all going to grow and increase ourselves right what's it a, a rising tide lifts all boats and uh, we haven't encountered a lot of uh, issues I mean you know currently dealing AAA has been unbelievable you've seen footage from their events um, you know on our impact broadcast and you've seen their talent come here and our talent go there Noah has done a a uh, great job of uh, of uh, being a partner. You look at the way that, you know, we had Moose and James Storm uh, over there early in the year. Eddie Edwards has been a, a constant present in uh, in Noah's product. If you mean, heck, heck, he's the first ever American. He's the first ever non-native to to win the Global Honored Crown for Noah. That's huge, and that's, uh, that's a great accomplishment for Eddie, and we're very honored to have him as a as a bridge between the two companies. He started with Noah, that was his home for many years. Now he's here and as Eddie so eloquently said, he now feels double blessed because he has two homes. So we haven't had issues at all. It's been great having the AAA guys here. Uh, it was great having uh, Mara Fuji and Ishimori here. We look forward to having more Japanese talent and Mexican talent, and as we said, talent hopefully from other areas around the world come and be part of our product. Guys, I'll, I'll say it. Over and over again as we go forward, it's, a, it's an open door policy. We're looking to go out there and put out the best people, put them on a platform that we have both domestically, digitally, and around the world, and let's go out there and get a great product out there to wrestling fans. Yeah, and I, and I would just follow up and, and echo what Scott said by, by adding that, uh, look, it's a, it's a relationship business, and as long as you approach any, any collaboration or any partnership, with the idea of how can we help each other, and we've been lucky enough to have partners so far who approach it that way along with us, I think it's going to be a success, and it could be something special in the long term. So we're going to continue to, to mine and look for partners that have that same sense of cooperation and collaboration and hopefully give the fans something special and, and, uh, and something we can grow upon. Muted. Hi, this is Nick Hausman with uh, WrestleZone.com. And uh, my question was actually for John. Um, you know, I think a lot of TNA fans have some familiarity of different eras with Scott and Sanjay uh, in creative. But uh, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, between your time in TNA and, and WWE, what do you think are creative choices you've made that kind of best reflect what your influence is going to be on the creative team? Well, uh you know, for the last, I guess, four years or so, uh, this company's been in a state of flux in terms of, uh, you know, the, the growth potential. And I think that one of the things that I like now uh, with this creative team is uh, not only the diversity we have, but the skill set we have. And, uh, you know, before all of this got together, you know, it was the, the, the prior creative team me and, and uh, you know, David Lagana and Matt Conway, it was just kind of the three of us. 
now with the background of Scott and the background of Sanjay and the experience of, uh, of Dutch, Abyss, and obviously uh, JB's talents, I think that the, the overall creative is going to take on a life of its own and be, uh, I guess, more dynamic. I'm hoping that it will be more dynamic than it has ever in the past. Uh, we just talked a little bit about some of these promotions that we're engaging with. I think that adds new life and vitality to the promotion. Um, I, I hope that I can continue to be a contributor in that process with my background in television uh, and in talent relations. So, uh, you know, I think the future is bright creatively for us. And as long as we continue to work as a team, which I'm 100% confident we will, this, this, uh, this promotion's future is bright. Hey, gentlemen, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you guys doing? Hey, you know, Mike. Uh, my question is, I, I know you don't want to dwell on the Jarrett situation, but how are creative plans changing? How has the team changed? Um, are we starting from scratch again? It's been eight months since Anthem took over the company. All we heard was the company was terrible. We need to make this company great again. And now the person who was in charge of creative when the company was allegedly terrible is back on creative again. Are we rebooting everything? Where do we stand? Are the plans that were existing under Jeff's vision gone? Like, as obviously, there's a lot of TV already taped, but when we get to November 5th, where do we stand in terms of creative being fresh versus what was already uh, envisioned under the previous regime? Hey, Mike, it's Scott Demore. Um, I mean, I guess first and foremost, uh, all of us here are, are here and assembled uh, for this company. Uh, you know, Jeff has tremendous strength, and Jeff has obviously over the years had tremendous creative vision. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been a TNA and there wouldn't be an impact here today. Um, you know, so you talk about, uh, you know, his vision. This company will always have some of the fingerprints of Jeff Jarrett on it, and that's a good thing from our perspective. Sanjay and myself are two individuals who consider Jeff a mentor and a friend, and uh, I think you're going to continue to see a product that evolves as everything in this industry has to evolve and move forward. And we're going to go out there. Are we going to try some new things? Absolutely. But we're not sitting here. There's not a reset button. There, is, there isn't any of that. What we're going to go out there and do is we're going to come together as a group. And as John had said previously, we have all kinds of people from different backgrounds who love the wrestling business and care about this company and this product. And we are going to work together collaboratively to put out what we feel is a, is a, is a great, viable, and uh, engaging product for wrestling fans. All right, so that didn't really answer my question. Like, the, the creative plans that existed before last week, are those scuttled, or are they just being changed a little bit? We're moving, we're moving full steam ahead with, uh, with Bound for Glory. We have some working concepts uh, beyond Bound for Glory and wide arcing stuff. And like I said, I, I mean, I respectfully, I think I did in, in one sense answer your question, Mike, in the sense we're not looking at radical change. We're looking, we're looking at tackling this thing and continuing to put out a product that evolves and moves in a direction. Some things we try are going to work, and some things that we try, as historically in wrestling happens, don't work. And we're going to look to learn from what we do, and we're going to continue to work and improve this product. Uh, hey, this is Riju from Sportskeeda. Uh, my question is, what was the rationale in bringing back Jim Cornette and firing Bruce Pritchard as an on-screen figure? Is uh, Pritchard still associated behind the scenes with uh, the company? Hey, Sanjay. Uh, Bruce Pritchard was, was a, a strictly an on-air talent. Uh, I think that we, have, we as a creative team are collectively going to look at that and see if that's something that we want to go uh, forward with or if that's not in the creative plans. As Scott said, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we definitely are, are always going to see uh, – fingerprints of Jeff and his, his expertise and his, and his mindset uh, going forward. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've got, a, we've got a, a bit of a vision that, that we want to accomplish, and, and I think that it'll slowly come across uh, post-bound for glory into the TVs that are going to be coming up. Hi, this is Jeremy Walker from Real Sport. There's been a lot of rumor in the last week or so about the GFW brand name being in jeopardy. Are you able to address that, please? Uh, 
Hey, this is Sanjay. Uh, in regards to that, uh, you know, I, I personally am not privy to any of that information. Um, we are uh, steering the ship in a creative aspect. Um, any anything that uh, any legal aspects of, of, of the company in, in regards to what you just asked, um, I'm not privy of. So uh, our, our our mindset is to to steer this ship in, in, in a creative, forward forward thinking vision. And I think I think, and this is John. I think that um, you know our job as creative is to come up with the best creative possible for for this product, whether you call it GFW, whether you call it Impact, whether you call it Anthem, whatever you call it, we're going to try to come up with the best creative behind it. So we're not really focused on uh, the letters or the name at this point. It's more of what's the meat on the bone. Hi guys, it's Lee Med from Alive Radio over here in Scotland. You mentioned before it's been a great year 2017 in terms of expansion for the product over here in the UK on Spike. Obviously you've just signed in Germany with uh, Pro Sieben Sat Eins in Germany and you've got an extension of your distribution deal with Pop over in the States. But also the past couple of weeks we've started to hear about the Global Wrestling Network. Should we expect to see more exclusive GFW product on the network? And how does the, the launch of the network affect the, over here in the UK something like the Total Access TNA app? Will that continue or will it be absorbed into the new uh, network? Hey guys, it's Scott. We're, uh, you know, from our position on creative, that's really something that is, is out of our, our, our realm of any hands-on involvement. Uh, we are very excited about the Global Wrestling Network. Uh, it is going. It is launching here, and it, it has uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of our content. And one of the things, is, as Ed Nordholm has uh, said, and I think is out there pretty publicly, is we are going to look for opportunities to expand that network and include multiple products, both domestically, with you look at some of the amazing independent wrestling that is out there in the American uh, scene, the American independent scene. We're also going to look for an opportunity to showcase uh, international promotions, whether they be from the UK or Europe or Asia or Middle East or Mexico or Canada or anywhere, we're going to help provide a platform where not only can the product be seen by more people using our large digital footprint as a company, but we're also going to look for an opportunity to help monetize that product for those promotions. So I think that that's one of the key components of the Global Wrestling Network. I think it's exciting as someone who's a content generator in Canada, separate from my role here. I think it's amazing and intriguing concept and exciting to see it roll out through the uh, coming months and years. Cool. Well, uh, let you guys know that if uh, if you have a second question, you feel free to get back in queue. Yeah, this is Jim Barcelo with MiamiHerald.com. My question, just was curious, if we know who will be leading the show, who will be in charge of the show once that time comes, and is, are there any plans to add anyone to creative side? Uh, hey, Sanjay, I, th I think right now there are they, we don't have any plans to add anybody to the creative side. I think, uh, as, been, as it's been said by... Um, John and Scott, uh, during this call, that uh, you know we've got a great team right now that kind of covers all facets and, and brings something different. Everybody's got their own special skill sets and experience and, and to kind of craft the best show possible. Uh, so, in regards to, to adding somebody, I don't see that uh, in the near future. Hey guys, it's Mike Johnson again from PWInsider.com. I uh, wanted to ask about talent. Uh, what do the changes mean about uh, the, for the talent rollover? You've had a lot of new talents that have been introduced in the last couple of months, some of whom have just started to be developed. Um, you've got a couple of talents who've kind of disappeared by the wayside. Eddie Kingston is one who hasn't been seen a lot lately. There's been talk that Loki had a blow up with management prior to the changes and uh, was done with the company with his deal expiring in October. Uh, I was wondering if you could touch on those two talents and maybe give us insight into whether there's going to be any changeover with the roster as, as a result of the ripple effect of the creative team changes. 
Hey, Mike, it's Scott again. Uh, you know, a roster in wrestling is always going to be fluid. Uh, we think there's been uh, lots of great additions here this year. We're obviously going to look to continue to, to mine and uh, find new talent to integrate into the product. Part of that process is going to be some talents falling off. And uh, I can certainly say I was part of the process with uh, Loki as he finished up with, here, with us here for now at the last taping. And I can certainly say it was far from a blow up. Um, shook hands, had a, had a great uh, time here. His words to me as we parted, and Sanjay was there with me, as he goes, guys, this, is, this run has been all positive and some of the most fun of, of my career. He came in here on a short-term contract. He fulfilled it. He did an amazing job as far as we're concerned, and the door remains open in the future when the time's right if both parties want to work together. That's one of the great things about the independent contractor relationship. Uh, it's one of the great things about the freedom that this business provides, and it's something that we think can be part of moving forward is maybe there doesn't have to be a roster of 40 people that stay the same from week to week to week. Guys come in, guys go. Uh, also to cover off, uh, you had mentioned Eddie Kingston. He was part of our gauntlet for the gold. Eddie's a guy who's been around a long time. Uh, will Eddie be part of things moving forward? We don't know because, quite frankly, we're here and we're sitting to look at things going forward now, but he is certainly on the table as a talent who's been here and a talent who's available and is said that he's ready to show up and go to work. And um, we'll see what the future holds for him. He's, uh, I'm not sure of his contract status, but he's been nothing but a class act in his time here. And we're just gonna field the best team uh, that we see fit to move forward. Hi there guys, uh, Joe Ronska from Across the Pond Wrestling again. Uh, I was wondering, um, Eli Drake currently was in the middle of his first uh, um, championship or not championship world championship run with uh, the company are there any other young talents who you see as potential kind of future world championship material like I personally think Desmond Xavier has what it takes but I'd be interested to know what you three think hey Sanjay I, I think that, uh, that that's kind of what we would like to create where there's a whole roster of guys that, that have potential to, to carry that ball and be put in that position and I think we've we've Right now, like uh, Desmond, your Desmond Xavier, your Matt Seidels, there's a ton of guys. The whole roster is full, and that's the kind of the goal is to fulfill a roster that, that can be put in that position and, and be completely uh, ready and willing and able to carry that ball. And I think that, uh, you know, we did that with Eli Drake, um, and he's just – he's totally excelled. I think he's uh, exceeded anybody's expectations on – on what and what he could accomplish and how he could come across and uh, as as a as a total star and, and uh, we're proud of him and and basically uh, representing uh, the company and uh, you know he just was at the AAA tapings uh, last uh, last month and he's got some stuff coming up here in Japan with our partners in NOAA so we're real excited about uh, giving the ball to a guy like Eli Drake. We didn't hear you, what you said. What are some of the uh, dream matches? I'm sorry, it's real low. If uh, it, you could so, repeat so that. His question is, what are some dream matches? I, I'm having trouble hearing, but I, I did hear, uh, what are some, some of the dream matches you see uh, looking forward in uh, in global? Well, I, I, I've got I've got personally got some dream matches, but I don't want to give them away here. I think that uh, you know that's kind of going to be the goal here going forward too, is is, is producing some dream matches for the fans and uh, mix and matching some of the talents that uh, we have access to with our partners in AAA and NOAA and, and uh, worldwide. Uh, you know, we talked about the UK scene booming uh, earlier, and I think there's so many options out there to mix and match with our talent as well. And, and uh, even if you even if you take that out of the equation, just uh, if you look at the GFW uh, Impact roster in itself, I think there's so many uh, dream matches there that that uh, we're ready to fulfill for the fans. Hey, my my question is for everyone, and I'm sorry if you had gotten to this, but um, there had been rumors that Alberto El Patron was figured into plans for Bound for Glory, and I was just wondering if he's figured into your current creative plans 
for Baton for Glory and uh, going forward. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, we have we have plans for uh, Alberto. We're excited that uh, he's going to be coming back at Bound for Glory. We're excited about the future for Alberto. Uh, he's an amazing talent, and as a creative group, we're real excited to come up with some real cool scenarios and stories for him in the upcoming months. Jim Barcelona, MiamiHerald.com again. With WWE Network and now Global Network, do you know if there's been an eye on WWE Network and what they've been doing to sort of get this whole Global Network going? Sorry, can you repeat the question, sir? Yes. With WWE Network and what they've done, and now with Global Network, have you all been looking at the model of what WWE has been doing to sort of get Global Network going? Well, certainly WWE has shown that there is an audience out there around the world that is looking to ingest more content on a, uh, on a, uh, on, on a more consuming basis. Um, you know, and their models certainly work. We're not going to look to WWE for our product, and we're not going to look to WWE for our business ventures, but certainly we want to go out there and we want to provide a place. WWE is doing a tremendous job of getting their footage out there. What we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're going to focus on getting our footage out there, on getting our partners like AAA and NOAA and Crash their footage out there, on making partnerships, strategic partnerships with independent promotions in the U.S. and Canada and over... If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. For, ...for independent entities to get out there and monetize the great things that they're doing. Because in this industry, we used to sell tapes. Then it became DVDs. Now everything has moved to a digital age, and it's become, I can tell you from my end, as someone who's a content provider, it's becoming harder to get that content out there. So an opportunity like this for promotions everywhere, large and small, to have a full-scale place where they can where they can put their 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 footage, they can put their intellectual property out there and have it paid for to view and monetize it. I think that's a great thing for wrestling. I think it's a great thing business-wise for promoters, and I think it's a great opportunity for fans. So there needs to be a place for the other brands of wrestling, the alternative brands of wrestling out there to get their product out there so fans around can, in the world can enjoy it, and that's what we're going to look to do. Hey, this is Riju from Sportskeeda again. Uh, is there any truth to the rumor that Rey Mysterio was supposed to be a part of uh, Bound for Glory? Thank you. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, we brought up a, a number of people in conversations that, you know, we'd love to have as a part of what we're doing here. Ray's one of the greatest wrestlers of his generation. So, uh, you know, if, if the opportunity ever presented itself for Ray to be available, we'd jump at the opportunity. But there's nothing concrete that was ever set in stone with Ray, no. Hey guys, it's uh, Nick Housman from WrestleZone.com again. Uh, my question was kind of for all of you all. I've seen different reports um, about, are, are you all planning on including uh, any of the Rosemary and Sexy Star incident into GFW storylines? And just kind of a little removed from it now, uh, what are your thoughts on it and has it affected your relationship with AAA? Hey, it's Sanjay. Uh, no, we don't plan on um, addressing that any further. Uh, on the television show, as far as the incident that that occurred, um, uh, it was a unfortunate incident, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to report that Rosemary is uh, is fine. She's healed up. She's ready to go. She'll be returning to action this weekend. So all is good on that front. Uh, I think that uh, both parties. Uh, it, it was a it was a uh, strenuous night uh, involved in that incident, but uh, everything is good to go on, on uh, the relationship between the two companies. We have time for a few more questions, so if you have another question, feel free to get back in queue. 
Hey guys, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider again. I got a question for Sanjay. You've uh, you've had a chance to work in a production capacity with GFW and and now Impact. This is the first time that I recall you're officially on a creative team. Um, talk about the change in responsibilities for that role. What you expect because now you're in a position where no matter what decisions are made, there's going to be heat coming from some aspect of the business. Um, and maybe maybe what you kind of hope to bring to impact uh, creatively from a contemporary sense that maybe the company hasn't been able to hit or achieve previously? Uh, you know, uh, dating back, uh, you know, five years ago, I'd, I'd say a little longer than that, Jeff uh, Jeff kind of transitioned me into this role, and, and I was on the creative team for Rinka King, and, you know, we, we, we shot a pilot for the, for the Speed Network and whatnot. So, you know, this is a uh, ongoing process for me personally into transition to a role like this. You know, uh, we we did the AMP stuff. We when, and uh, you know I started here on the team in March. Uh, I, I, I'm excited. Um, I'm a very I'm, I'm a realist. I'm very realistic of of, uh, of my career and, and my age and and how long I've been working. I'm, I'm coming up on 18 years of in-ring action. I've got a family. I've got two kids. So this transition is perfect for me personally, and I think that I can um, I think I can contribute, and I have, and, and and just from a different different aspect, a different viewpoint. You know, I, I'm. Uh, I'm a 35-year-old active pro, pro wrestler that's on the scene internationally. Uh, I I, I kind of have a tune uh, to the ground. I know what's I, I know what's going on. I, I'm kind of connected to all facets of the business. So uh, I'm hoping to bring that to the table here. Uh, something that uh, you know, with uh, Scott and John, I just uh, you know, not being active wrestlers on the scene, I think it, it, you know I, I can contribute that to to the team and. Uh, kind of move forward. I, I'm, I'm excited. I really am, uh, I, and uh, I, I love the love the challenge of it of, the, of it all. I th- you know, five years ago, transition to something like this, and uh, you know, th- this is uh, the highest profile uh, position, I guess you could say. But uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited for the future. I really am. Hi, uh, Joe from Across the Pond Wrestling again. Um, over this year, we and last year, we've seen uh, a lot of work from Jeremy Boris. Obviously, things like his uh, great match against uh, Dino and uh, um, Dino and Josh Matthews at or uh, over this year, and also he did some interesting work over this year with your uh, partner, The Crash, where he filmed some matches using drones. I was wondering whether the three of you think. Um, uh, there's much of a future for drones in use of live filming in instances such as wrestling, because I think there's potential there for other in, innovations in um, filming methods and unique u- ways of the audience being able to view the experience. Hey, it's I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say this much. I, I think that uh, Jeremy is a definite trendsetter when it comes to the production aspect of things, and, and I think that uh, this Thursday uh, on the show, Thursday night on Pop, you'll see uh, a lot of footage from the Crash show in Tijuana that just happened last week with OVE and LAX, and uh, Borash, Jeremy Borash was down there. The drone was in full effect, and, and uh, it's some really, really, really cool, uh, hip, new age stuff that, that uh, he's been doing on the production aspect of things, and I think that it's, gonna, it's only a matter of time before others follow suit. You're Jim Barcelona again. GFW has been working with Bobby Lashley, of course, and American Top Team. And Impact in the past has worked with MMA. Are there more plans moving forward to continue this with American Top Team and with MMA? And if you could talk about the crossover appeal in doing something like that. Uh, this is John. So, you know, our experience with uh, Dan Lambert and America's Top Team has been extraordinary, you know, and, and I, I think that uh, we, we would be foolish if we decided that this was going to be it with uh, with America's Top Team and with Dan. I mean, the guy is super talented. He's super excited to be a part of this. And, uh, you know, we've enjoyed this partnership. So the door is always open for uh, crossover athletes uh, that, that want to be a part of what we're doing here. And, you know, we were lucky enough to have someone like Dan and America's top team as, as a partner. 
and we're excited to, um, you know, to showcase him at Bound for Glory. Uh, it's going to be a pretty cool night. Hey, Riju from Sothkira again. So this is a question for Sanjay. Um, so I interviewed Trevor Lee the other day and he said that he's not really an X Division superstar, but a superstar in the X Division. Uh, now with the kind of athleticism that somebody like uh, Johnny Impact brings in, do you see a distinction between the heavyweight division and the X Division anymore? Thank you. Uh yeah, I think that uh, I think that there's always going to be divisions in, in pro wrestling. There's always going to be uh, different belts for every division, but I think it's an archaic uh, idea to think that a, a guy could not transcend one di one division to the other division. And, and I think that uh, you know, if you've been watching our show, uh, you, you've had Matt Seidel beat a guy like Bobby Lashley. You know, it's just uh, stuff like that is, is something that is something that we're, we're you know we're trying we're trying to hit. It, it, like I said earlier, this. Uh, the goal is to have an entire roster uh, of talent that you can slot in a role to carry a company, and, and that's the goal right now. We'll go to uh, Ryan here for the final question tonight. You may now ask your question. Hey, guys. Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com again. Uh, once again, for all three of you, uh, you're heading into the biggest show of the year for uh, GFW, Bound for Glory, traditionally the crown jewel of the company. How important is it for you guys to just seize this opportunity now and make a statement to kind of quiet some of the rumors and innuendo and maybe uh, quiet the critics a little bit? Hey, Sanjay, I, I think that uh, obviously that's important, but I think if you take all that uh, out of the equation, I think that uh, the goal is still every single time we at, we go out there to deliver the, the, the best show possible, uh, no matter what's going on backstage, no matter who's heading what, the goal is always to – provide the uh, the best show possible, especially when we're going into a night like Bound for Glory. And, and uh, you know, I personally, I was on the first Bound for Glory pay-per-view in the, in the first match and, and you know, coming uh, all these years later in this new position, I, I think that the goal is always to go out there and give the absolute best show possible. Well, I want to thank everybody for calling in today, and we're going to give uh, some final thoughts. Let's, uh, Big John, what's the final thought for today? Well, you know, the, 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 the final thought would be that there's a, a big night coming up in Bound for Glory. We have a, uh, an amazing creative staff here with, uh, with Sanjay and Scott, with Abyss and Dutch and, and JB, and uh, the future is really bright here, and uh, we're, we can't wait to get back to work uh, and show you guys some of the best wrestlers in the world, some of the best. Uh, production team in the world, and to knock it out of the park. Sanjay, how about from you? Know, I'll, 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 I'll I'll just uh, second that. I think that uh, you know, the goal is, is is exactly what John said. We're heading into the biggest show of the year. Uh, we just want uh, everybody out there to you know, you know, I, I'm not trying to kid anybody. That there are some lost viewers, but. Uh, you know, there's a different day and there's a different vision, and, and we'd love everybody to give it a shot. And I think that uh, you'll come out uh, uh, extremely happy. Uh, and uh, don't forget uh, Pop TV as well every Thursday. Coach Tamor, excited to go out there and do what we've done historically uh, quite often, which is give people their money's worth and more as part of Bound for Glory, and really uh, drive home with a bang our 2017 uh, year, I'll say it, then very excited to work with everybody here, both on the creative team and the entire staff here about getting ready and having 2018 be a tremendous year of moving forward, growing both in our existing platforms and also with the launch of a global wrestling network. Very excited about the opportunities that that new avenue is going to open up, open up for us, for our international partners, and for uh, content providers, like I've said over and over again, both domestically and abroad, it's a new era, it's a new age to go out there, and we're going to go out there and provide a place for uh, alternative wrestling to get out there. We're going to give the platform, put the product up there, and give wrestling fans what they want, which is a variety of different forms and styles of wrestling, uh, all with one home. Perfect. Scott, Sanjay, 
Big John, you guys can go back to the uh, the conference room. We we all appreciate your time very much, and we will talk to media. We'll talk to you guys next week with another media teleconference.